You, when you feel like you're at the bottom or like you're dealing with some health issue, that can be so devastating that you just almost give up. But the moment there's a spark of light that says, there's somebody over here who might be able to help you, we immediately, it gives us this jolt. It gives. So anyway, I'm so excited to be with Wendell because I got to know him. We're a nice guy. He's a hard worker. You know, some people slacked off, but when you were there, you never slacked off. You you did a good job. So tell, give a little bit of your background. I guess. Well, you know, I'm I'm just a I'm just a regular guy, and <laughs> that's really nothing special. I, you know, perseverance is my thing, right? Mm -hmm. And you know, from the time I was small. You know, I had a couple of challenges, some adversity to, to overcome at a young age. And uh, that kind of set the stage for what would come. Mm -hmm. You know, I, my, my mother was a school teacher. My dad was just a operator worker at a plant in, in, in our hometown. And they, they taught the, the value of, of hard work and preservation, things like that. So I took that to heart. They always wanted me to go to college. So my thing was like, how am I going to go to college? You know, do y'all have the money to put me through college? <laughs> so, um, so I started thinking about it and I said, you know what? I like football. I love football. I want to play football. I was not allowed to play until I was about eight or nine, 10 years old. Once I got a chance to play, I got a chance to play and I played and I played with all my heart. And uh, so let me just interject real quick. So at eight or nine, whatever year or when you decided you want to play football, did you connect the world that college at that young age that you could go to college if you played football? Yeah, I, I did. Because before I got involved, I just watched it a lot. Mm. I watched a lot of football on Saturday. I wasn't out there playing, you know, at the Park Runner Leagues like some of my friends, so I would watch it on TV. And they would all, you know, the announcers would always say this, you know, this kid here majors in, you know, engineering or sociology. He's got a 4.0, 3.0, whatever. He's full scholarship. And so that kind of stuck with me. Mm. And so once I saw, you know, some of my, uh, my friends in my neighborhood doing well in basketball, football, track, baseball, I said, well, okay, what do I do well? Okay. And my interest was in football, and I always wanted to be a quarterback. So I started looking for quarterbacks in college football, started looking for quarterbacks in the NFL, uh, Warren Moon, those types of people really, really stuck with me. And I would take the newspaper clippings, you know, every Monday morning I had a newspaper clipping of some, of some black quarterback, mm. Doug Williams, Warren Moon, whoever it was. And um, I would just stare at it and I would just like visualize, I'm, I'm, that's gonna be me one day. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna be in that spot one day. And so, um, so, you know, went through, um, you know, junior high school, high school, playing football, playing quarterback, got my opportunity to play in, in, in high school and a little bit of adversity happened. My senior year, got my knee uh, kind of blown out there, had to do some rehab, but then I got an opportunity to pursue a scholarship at the University of North Texas. And then, um, you know, earned us a full scholarship there. Uh, just like, you know, Daryl Green was telling me when we were working out, he said, man, I said, Daryl, you, you, you were like the guy, right? Like I wasn't the best guy in high school. You know, I walked on, you know, at some of these places, mm. whatever. And I earned this gospel. So you'd be surprised at how many athletes have that same story. You, mm -hmm. you know, it's not the guy that's the, the fire, you know, and he's the best guy on the on the field. And, you know, he gets this full scholarship and he, always, he makes it to the league and he's successful. Most of the guys in the league went through some type of adversity. They overcame something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I got to University of North Texas, uh, earned my scholarship. And I had a, um, a coach there, a black coach that had played in the uh, in the league. His name was Ron Shanklin. He played for the Pittsburgh Steelers. He played for uh, played with me, Joe Green. Mm -hmm. And he said, you know, when Joe and I played, he said, when we left North Texas, we knew we were supposed to be in the league. And I said, well, coach, how, how do I know if I'm gonna, you know, be there? He said, well, you'll know. He said, you'll know your senior year. He said, you know, right about the mid or you know, a little bit beyond the mid of the season, you know, start looking internally. And, and if that's where you are going to go, you, you, you'll know that's where you're going to be. And so, you know, it, it was something I, I figured was beyond my performance. You know, it was one thing to say, okay, you know, you're going to get drafted or whatever. And, you, you know, you, you got these great skills, but you know, you'll know if, if you're going to go make the next step mm -hmm. to the NFL. So I just said, well, you know, NFL is probably not going to be the next step for me. So education, more education, and to prepare myself for the next step, which was, you know, obviously the, the workforce. And, and, and what's interesting, you bring up a really good point. It's that discipline. We always look at discipline as the thing that we're doing at that moment, but discipline is discipline. Yeah. And you know how you, some people say how you do anything is how you do everything. Yeah. 
And when you learn that, I mean, even in, when it comes to moving through illnesses and ch life challenges, because life challenges come in many forms. Yeah. So sometimes, you know, we think, oh, this is separate of this. But once you learn how to do, you know, how to move through something, you can pretty much adapt that philosophy and that mindset to anything. Yeah. So let's let's jump to now you 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 are now what? What is, what is your work? That yeah. So so I'm a, um, I'm in the. Um... I'm in the defense field, mm -hmm. so um, so I'm an engineer, and I also uh, achieved my master's in business administration. And uh, so I currently uh, am a senior manager for Raytheon, and they are a major defense contractor in the industry. So I, you know, when 9/11 have interesting story. When 9/11 happened, I was like right out of college. Mm -hmm. We had just moved to Dallas, Texas. I went out to the airport to do a job out there uh, for my company, and. 9-11 happens. You know what I'm saying? I'm at the airport. The next day I get a call and said, you're going to be on this airport consortium team. And that basically my career took that path. Hmm. So I've been doing airport security, securing the airports, you know, the borders, things of that sort for about 22 years. Oh, wow. I've been in that, I've been in that field. So, you know, I, I, I really, you know, like you say, when things happen, you just basically kind of you know, you change shift. and you, you, yeah. you make a shift and you, you, you make it a, 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 the focus. So I told myself, say, you know, if I'm going to be doing airport security at the time, I didn't know what it was going to be like, what it's going to be like, what it was going to look like. I said, but you know, if my kids and my wife are going to get on those planes, I want to make sure they, I want to make sure they exactly. stay. Exactly. So let me just jump, jump a little bit ahead. So you, you, you had a health scare at one point. You want to share a little bit about that? Yeah. Cause I'm going to get to how you met Dr. Montgomery and how this whole transitioned into this project. Yeah, yeah. You know, as an athlete, you know, you never think you're gonna you're gonna get sick. You know, you think you might hurt a knee, you think you might, you know, crack a rib, break a leg, break a finger, or whatever, but you don't think you're gonna, you know, something's gonna happen. So, you know, I'm I'm just I'm living life and, and trying to do the best that you can, you know, in terms of diet and exercise and everything like that. Two thousand one had a had had a had had a diagnosis that I had to do something about. So I, I, I did definitive surgery for the prostate and everything was going well at the time. Uh, you know, everything is coming back and, and, um, and I'm healing well. And then uh, later, uh, uh, one year later um, is when you kind of you have to take all of your, your, your blood work and your exams, to, you know, make everything, you know, make sure everything's OK. Some of my numbers start creeping up a little bit. Mm. OK, to where they say, well, it could be something going on here. So we're going to wait and see what's, what's going on. So we wait a little bit. They start creeping up a little bit more. Nothing, you know, extreme out of range, but it shouldn't be, you know, incrementally uh, creeping up. So they said, well, you know, we can't really see anything. We, we, you, you look great. You know, you're, you're progressing great. So we're going to do a full body scan of you. It's called a P PSMA. We're going to see if anything's hanging out. And, you know, we missed them. So they did the P PSMA and on the scan, something popped up in my rib. So I'm like, oh man, what's going on? You know, like, you know, another challenge. You know, I, I got to persevere. I got to figure out how to handle this. I said, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go and let some specialists look at this. And I had several specialists in Atlanta, Georgia, look at the scans to interpret them. They said, you know what? You know, we think it's an old football injury, but we, we're not for sure. The way we'll make, we'll be sure is if we do a biopsy. So they, I'm like, oh, a biopsy. Okay. So, so I stayed in town a little bit, a little bit longer, did the biopsy, got the results. And it came back negative, non malignant. I'm just like, you know, man, you know. So while I was in Atlanta, I called Dr. Montgomery. He said, now how did you know about Dr. Montgomery? Well, well, we met Dr. Montgomery because my mother, about two years before that, had gotten uh, ill. She had um, some hardening of her arteries. Now, you know, my mother would be 80 years old this year, but she had some hardening of the arteries. They want to go in. And do the, you know, do the stent and open heart surgery and all that kind of stuff. Say, so, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, she's 78 years old. What else can be done? And the doctor at the medical center said, hey, I know a guy that may can help you. His name is Baxter Montgomery. Why don't you give him a call? Um, he's going to, you know, he's going to do this naturally. So we gave him a call. And sur sure enough, you know, she got in the office. She did a detox. And her health was literally going in the decline. Mm. You know, she had started, you know, walking with a cane. She was overweight and, you know, starting to bend a little bit, get a little osteoporosis and things of that sort. Now, a lot of high blood pressure and things. And so she did the detox and she, my mother's lost about, I know, about 40 pounds. Wow. No hurt in her joints. You can see her out there, right? 
today. I mean, she's walking. No, that was her. Yeah, yeah. yeah. wow. So, she, she, she's walking around, and uh, no cane, nothing, no assist. She's all on like one high blood pressure medicine now. Her blood pressure is is in a very normal range, and she's doing extremely well. I mean, she she has no pain. She no, you know, she just kind of gets around. You know, she doesn't do a lot because of her age, mm -hmm. but um, but she you know she gets around the house. She does her chores. She likes to cook a lot, stuff like that. She does the raw thing. And, um, and so that's, you know, that's what she does. So she's doing. So that's how you met Doc, and you not, called that's 10 minutes. That's, that's, that's how I made Doc. So while I was in Atlanta, you know, having, having the, all these, um, this analysis and, and the biopsy, I called Dr. Montgomery and he said, what are you doing in Atlanta? I said, well, I, you know, I told you I, you know, I wanted to, you know, get this analyzed and, and checked out. He said, so what did they find out? He said, I said, you know, the scan showed that, you know, I had some on, on my rib, so they wanted to do a biopsy. He said, on the rib? I said, yeah. And he said, did you get an injury or something when you, you know, when you're playing football? I said, yeah, I, I did crack, I had cracked ribs and like in that location. So he said, you know, I think it's a contusion. And I said, well, I need, to, I want to, I want to make it definitive. Should I go ahead and do the biopsy? He said, he put the phone down. And I think he was talking to Camille at the time in the office, came back on the phone. He said, yeah, go ahead, go ahead and do it and see, see what happens. And so he said, but you know, you go ahead and do all that. He said, but what I want you to do, if you agree, I want you to come to Houston for six weeks this summer. I said, I want you to go to the, the whole, the hard detox program, the hard workout of training. Um, I want you to do it all. And, um, you know, that included a, a lot of clearing of the mind, uh -huh. and heart, soul. And it all goes really, together. Yes. Don't you really? It all goes together. It all goes together. Yeah. So I, I, I did that. And that was when the Heart of the Champion was going on. Well, well, it was, it was birth. Yeah. Uh -huh. Exactly. So, so, yeah. so let me ask you. So we got to work together and had yeah. some fun just kind yeah. of, and, you know, what would you say was one of the things you could walk away with and then you wanted to share with someone out there saying, look, what that whole, not just the show, but everything about it. Like, mm -hmm. what would you share with someone? Well, you know, I would say, you know, they, they always say that, you know, um, football and sports is like a, a real brother and sisterhood. And so, so let, 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 let's take that thread, right? So I felt that I knew no one when I came in there. No one knew me. But I think that, you know, whatever part that, you know, Daryl played or Kenny or uh, Mark or yourself, it was just like, man, it was just like, it was like it was a magnet. Mm -hmm. it, it, from the outside, I know it's hard work, but from the outside, everybody was willing to work mm -hmm. toward a common goal in helping to produce something that's really going to help people, I think, for many years. Mm -hmm. So that's the overall takeaway. But I think, you know, ultimately, it's, it's the friendships. You know, when you when you know you can go in a situation and you're working with people and you can you can befriend them and you can come back see them again and say hey what's going on mm -hmm. it's just it just does something you know what I'm saying and and so you know I've I've done that tonight I think one of the biggest impacts I had was uh, was with Daryl mm -hmm. uh, Daryl now has a lot of private conversations he's a man of faith and you know he's he's a father and just a really strong man and so we never talked to him a lot about football. You just talked about life, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. about life stuff. And I text him, you know, every now and then. And, uh, you know, I just thank him hey, just being there because you lifted me. And oh, I was in a dark place when I came here. Mm. It was dark. And and um, and so just to see him be around, you know, one of the guys that I looked at, you know, on TV and just wanted to meet him. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, I was actually able to hang out with him and, um, and and work out and stuff like that and talk. So it was great. Yeah, I think the thing that, you know, we wanted to really mm. drive home is that the importance of how everything connects together. Like when you when you feel like you're at the bottom or like you're dealing with some health issue, that can be so devastating that you just almost give up. But the moment there's a spark of light that says, there's somebody over here who might be able to help you, we immediately, it gives us this jolt. It gives you a jolt. And then what it does, it, it, it pushes you to drive harder to find other alternatives. So you, you know, people who watch this show, hopefully, and, and learn about Dr. Montgomery and other doctors like it, because this place is filled with doctors and other people and patients who have overcome so much. And the importance of surrounding yourself, you know, and doing research and looking into some new ways and new alternatives, that it doesn't always have to be the way that your mom and them did it. Okay. <laughs> You know, 
you know, and right, that right. there are other alternatives, but we don't know because we don't we do the research and we don't ask. Exactly. And if you want, if you're hungry enough to learn something different, something different will find you, you know? So just know that people like you, Daryl Green, you'll see in the docu-series, you know, he came in there, he didn't even know he was not well. Right. You know, cause he looked well, but he didn't, had no clue. Right. And how many of us are walking around not having a clue you know, and it's not until we get a certain age or all of a sudden something happens and we're forced into it, you know? So if you can prevent things, that's the best way to go and start changing your diet. And your... So let me ask you this. You were on the six week raw diet. I know you're still not on raw. I am. I'm still raw. I have not eaten a cooked meal in a year almost. I'm going to do it. For well, you better than me. <laughs> well, I've never been raw. I will eat a lot of raw because I love salads all day, but... Every now and then, I was some nice and warm. Wow, congratulations. But uh, so is your body now at the place where it's not craving it? Or do you look at it and you go, oh, mm, that look good over there. <laughs> well, you know, I, you know, every now and then, I'll taste something that um, that's not supposed to be in there. Mm. Right? So I, I'll, I'll tell you this. So I, I had a business trip in Indianapolis uh, a couple weeks ago. I was telling my wife and uh, we were at a place um, called St. Elmo's in, um, in in Indianapolis, you know, five star restaurant or whatever. So my team's there and uh, everybody's ordering. So guys, look, I'm not having the steaks and lobster tonight. I'm not having wine. This is what I'm doing. So the waitress comes out and says, OK, what can I get for you? I said, I want it all raw and I want vegetables and lettuce and all that kind of stuff. And so she said, well, the only thing we have is, is our is our salad. And I said, I looked on the menu and said, I'm saying, but you got all this other stuff in there. So just make sure that there's none of that in there. Just make sure that you got the greens in there. You got the cucumbers, you got the tomatoes and the carrots and all that other stuff. So when they brought it out, they did have the dressing in it. Mm. Okay. So it was vinegar. So I was good with it. I was like, okay, okay, okay. I took a bite of it. Immediately, there was this strong, pungent odor of pork. I could tell it was pork. And I started digging in it and they put bacon bits. Mm. Salad. Mm, that happened to me once yeah, and I got put, so sick. Yeah, they put bacon bits in the salad. So I say, well, you can take that back. Right. So it's just those things that'll happen. I will tell you, I'm not yet over like the grilled fish. Like if I smell some grilled fish. It's, it, the fish is usually, fish and cheese for most people are yeah. the hardest two things to let go of. But, okay. but fish, that's still hard. Even yeah. I haven't eaten meat since 79. But okay. Okay. fish is always that one thing that when I smell it, like chicken, nah, nothing else. Right. But every now and then I smell a good piece of fish or you be at a barbecue a party where they have some fried fish and you say, oh God, look at that over there. You know, because some people go into it for the animals. I just really went into it for health reasons. Oh, right. really, I had a cute boyfriend. That's actually why I stopped eating meat. Okay. Many years ago, he was very cute and he taught me, he says, he didn't eat meat, so I'm not eating meat and I just never went back. So it had nothing to do with our animals. <laughs> it had something to do with the male species. So, but because of that, you know, I don't have that kind of, you know, I look at the poor animals and I, right. that doesn't drive me. I'm glad I do it for that reason. But every now and then I look, do a look at fish and I'm like, that fish be looking good. We need to get some little house on. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 don't, I don't have an issue with, with, with chicken. Yeah, uh, uh, no. But, 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 but you would, if you, you, you find the first time I, I, and I did it by mistake, I ate some soup that had something in it. And it might have been pork, maybe, or beef broth. Or so, I didn't know. But every time I took a, a spoonful and swallowed, my, it was almost like my body went, but it felt like I was just hungry, getting hungry because yeah. I hadn't eaten. Yeah. By the time I got from my car, I mean, from the restaurant to my car, that was it. I was thrown up for three days. My body just rejected it okay. immediately. It's like, what is this thing in my system? Yeah. So, but, but the good thing is that you know that you have decided to take care of your life and take care of your health. You want to be around for your great grands and all that yes. other stuff yeah. and to be able to move and not have to be on life alert because you can't get, you know, you can't get up. Hey, there you go. There you go. Absolutely. Well, good for you. So did you have fun shooting the docuseries and look forward to seeing it? I did. I, I didn't know what it was going to become. I, I was really, yeah, I was, I was really there just to support, just support mm -hmm. and bond and, and, and take advantage of what he was doing. Yeah. Well, and, uh, so I, so I, I've been a beneficiary of it. Well, um, I just want to thank you for sitting down and chatting with us a little bit and sure. um, make sure you guys check out Heart and Soul of a Champion. It'll be streaming soon. You can always go to MontgomeryHeart.com, go to Tara Bennett Smith, and then you'll find it because that's my name. So I know I'll have some postings there. Go to, go to Tara Bennett Smith. Go to Tara Bennett Smith, as he says. Anyway, thank you, Wendell, for joining us. And go downstairs because I don't want you to miss all the other good speakers. All righty. Thank you, baby.